Hey y'all, welcome back to AMS in Progress. I'm Amber and I'm here today with my favorite zero point foods. So the hat is not the best option for a video, but if you saw my hair, you'd be thanking me for the hat. Um, I'm not only gonna be talking about my favorite zero point foods, but also giving you ideas on how to have them because like that's what's actually helpful, right? It's like everyone knows that a banana is a zero point food, but giving you ideas of how to eat them as well, just a little bit more helpful for you. I have a lot of new subscribers and a lot of those new subscribers are new to WW. So whether you're new to WW, just new to me, or just want a refresher, just sit back, have some coffee, and let's talk about our favorite zero point options. I'm going to do my absolute best to link as many like recipes or write out as much I can in this description box to help you out. Uh, if you see it says WW link, click it. It will take you over to your app. Sometimes it makes you sign in the first time you do that. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sign in and then when you have that recipe pulled up on your phone, you could always hit the little bookmark on the top and that will save it to your saved recipes so you have for later. Now, one thing I don't love about the update on the app is you cannot edit your recipes the way you used to be able to. You can take ingredients off and you can add ingredients, but there are some things that I had added like in the past that I put all the ingredients on and then was going to later go back to add instructions. I'm not allowed to go back and add instructions now. I don't know what they did. They need to stop, stop, stop messing with it. It was fine. Anyway. Look down in the description box. We're gonna jump straight in. I have these organized by type of food. So we're gonna jump into protein first. Absolutely. Number one, eating all the time on repeat, chicken breast. Who isn't? You can do so many things with chicken breast. Not only can you buy the frozen chicken strips like the fajita chicken strips, grilled chicken strips, blackened chicken strips, or you can just do do your own thing with your chicken. It is the perfect base to any dinner recipe, any lunch recipe, and um, just really bulks up that protein without adding any points. Obviously, that's what this whole list is about. Whether you want it to be buffalo chicken or in a salad or in a chicken salad, or if you want it to be a taco, like the sky's the limit. Do you want chicken parm? What do you want? You can make it happen with chicken. You can do any kind of variety. Do you want chicken fried rice? Like we could keep going all day, folks. We're gonna move on because I like to talk about food. So we're gonna need a minute for the other stuff too. The second one I eat the most op often is ground turkey. You're only supposed to use 99% or 98% fat-free turkey. If I could find 98% fat-free turkey, that would be my go-to because I think the 99% is not as great. So, little secret, I use 97% and it counted as zero points. There, I said it. You do you, I'm gonna do me. It's working for me so far. But whatever you decide to do, ground turkey is again amazing. Tacos, spaghetti, burgers. I've made my own breakfast sausage just using uh, sausage seasonings and made it a zero point breakfast sausage. There's so much you can do and it's hearty and delicious. And in my opinion, if I have to warm something up for lunch, I would much rather do ground turkey than chicken. Chicken's weird in the microwave to me. So if I know I'm gonna have a lot of leftovers, turkey is my go-to. Another great option is shrimp. It's one of those things I don't think about as often just cause I forget it. But I love shrimp, my daughter, loves a shrimp boil and literally the only thing I have to count is weigh out my potatoes and it's shrimp, corn. Uh, my husband does andouille sausage in his, I just don't eat it. Um, and the potatoes with the shrimp seasoning, whatever craw crawfish boil seasoning and it is delicious. And I just spray a little bit of, I can't believe it's not butter on and it's normally like a three or four point dinner, which is awesome and different. It's not, a grilled chicken breast with steamed broccoli and some jasmine rice. That's good too, but it's boring. Let's be real. If we ate that every night, we'd be bored out of our mind. So a little spice, a little variety. It's gonna do you some good. I don't know what's happening with the lighting back here. It keeps doing weird stuff, um, but let's move on. Greek yogurt. This is the 0% Greek yogurt. I don't love Greek yogurt as sour cream. A lot of people do that. I can do it in a dip 
or like in a soup as sour cream, but I can't just like glob it on my taco and eat it as sour cream like some people. I wish I could, I just can't. Um, but I do like it to replace sour cream in recipes, but I mainly love, love my yogurt fluff. I actually got this recipe from Ashley Tracks Points. I talk about her quite a bit, probably an unusual amount. <laughs> Um, but here is her handle on Instagram. So go to Instagram and, and she's really, really helpful over there. So to your yogurt, keeping in mind, however much yogurt you have, is going to control the flavor because this, you can only use four grams for zero points. If you want to keep it zero points, you can add points. If you want to do more than this for a cup, go for it. If you want a zero point yogurt fluff, four grams of the cheesecake sugar-free jello pudding mix. This is key. I've had people say they've used vanilla, white chocolate, and those were both good. I've had bad reviews on the actual chocolate one with it, which I don't blame you, that doesn't sound very good. But this one is my favorite. So I have to go to Walmart to get this. And it's like one of the only things I go to Walmart for. So I grab like five boxes at a time. So four grams of this with eight grams of this. And then you just do a splash of whatever milk you have. I use either almond milk or cashew milk. I kind of go back and forth between which one I get. And that's really just to help the powder incorporate into your yogurt, stir it up. I normally go for about a half a cup of yogurt. That's about my comfort zone. And then if I want it to be like a really concentrated cheesecake flavor because I'm using it as a fruit dip, then I'll even go to like a fourth of a cup for the four grams. And I'm telling you, delicious. So that's my favorite way to have Greek yogurt. I also like it in an egg salad and then eggs are next on my list. Eggs are a great zero point protein. I love them hard boiled and I love them in an egg salad. Other than that, I got to sprinkle them throughout. Those seem to be like the main ways I like them. I can do them over easy. What is it called when the yolk is running but everything else is set? I like it that way. Uh, scrambled, I got to be in the mood. I got to I gotta be in the mood and it's a lot better when you add cheese <laughs> and that's not zero points. So we're gonna move along. And then last but not least on our proteins, beans. Do not forget the power of a bean, the mighty little bean, black bean, pinto bean, refried beans, um, garbanzo beans. They're all good. Throw them into a recipe to add some bulk. Uh, if you saw my taco junk recipe from the last or one of the last videos, you see how much more bulk I had in my meal versus just doing ground turkey. Instead, adding two cans of beans, some corn, it really made it a lot of food that I can enjoy for super low points because we're shoving in zero point foods wherever we can. My favorite bean is pinto uh, and then refried, which is pinto beans, but like, you know, cooked differently. I love taro beans. Those are normally one point for half a cup if you're wanting something that has a little bit more flavor, that's a way to do it. I love a taro bean and I am okay with counting half a cup for one point. Moving on to vegetables. Now I have a rule here in this house and that's when in doubt, air fry it on 380 for 15 minutes. Give it a little toss a couple times. Get your eyes on it, see what it looks like. What is it doing? Does it need longer? Cook it longer. If I'm not using my air fryer, I'm using my oven at 400 for about 20 minutes. Something like carrots or potatoes are gonna cook longer. I like carrots more around the 35 minute mark. Potatoes, honestly, it's been so long since I've cooked potatoes in the oven to roast them that I couldn't even tell you because I just shove those suckers in my air fryer. I always put on some kind of cooking oil spray. I prefer avocado because it can handle high heat. I use salt, pepper, and garlic every single time. I might also add other things like onion powder, ranch seasoning, you know, whatever suits my fancy. Maybe maybe a little, a little chili powder if I'm feeling real bougie, if it's potatoes. Onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika in equal amounts. It's magic, it's magic on your potatoes. Um, but those are really like the way I cook them, air fry or bake. And then it always just comes out delicious, especially if they're frozen. Uh, Cause that's how I normally air fry because I'm, I'm lazy and they're already, they're already cut up for me. And then I don't have to get through them like without them expiring. They're just there. So that's what I normally do. 
Um, but I do also like zucchini and squash. I'll cut those up, throw them in the air fryer. Same rules on the on the timing, but I'll use the Greek seasoning, Cavender's Greek seasoning. On That tastes delicious on green beans, zucchini, and squash. I love a Normandy blend. Have you tried that? It's the mixture of broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. Sprinkle some garlic salt with parsley. Air fryer bake. You're good to go. My favorite because it's really like a starch, but they're letting us count it for zero points anyway, and that's corn. It's corn, and it's delicious. I just microwave that sucker from the freezer, and then when I get it into a bowl, I spray some, I can't believe it's not butter, and some salt and pepper, and, and I'm happy. I'm good to go. I just realized I made some. <laughs> oh gosh, I cooked some in the microwave for lunch and I didn't eat it. Oh, I know what I'm eating for a snack here in a minute. Man, don't you hate it when that happens? All right, moving on. Carrot sticks, love me some carrot sticks, whether I'm using a veggie dip that I've shown on one of my last meal, my mini meal prep. Uh, I'll try to, again, I'll try to link all these below as long as I have room. I love carrot sticks with hummus and I freaking love, 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 love me some carrot sticks, cooks in the air fryer with a sriracha mayo. I call them carrot fries. I put a little, I'll link it. I'll link it. It's delicious. You got to try it. Um, it's a great substitute for French fries whenever I have hamburgers and stuff. And it's just a little different. And, you know, I want a variety of produce for my health. I'm doing this to be healthier. So I want a little orange, a little green, a little red. I want all the colors of the rainbow in my belly. That's what's best. So I try to do a variety and that's a good way to get more variety. I love me some mushrooms, especially when they're paired with onion. And I just cook that in a skillet and then top it on anything. And it's absolutely delicious. Mostly chicken though. You know, so that's a real low point thing. I love spinach for either salads or to throw in the freezer and throw them in my smoothies. I have a particular smoothie that I really, really like, and I throw a handful of spinach in there and I can't even taste it. And so like, I'm, I'm feeling good about life for that. I love a slaw mix or cabbage. I have a short on here that is how to make cabbage for, I think it's a one point for the serving of cabbage. Um, I'm actually gonna make that this coming up week. And I also love to make like a taco slaw. I don't like regular coleslaw, but if it's on top of like a pulled pork sandwich or a taco, then I'm a fan. So that's what I make slaw with. And you can use the light mayonnaise to really lower the points and you have a, yourself a, like a really good situation. Now, a couple things you might not think about. Um, I'm not a huge bell pepper fan. There are zero points, you know, eat them if you like them. I love me some poblano pepper. It just has a different vibe. So I do a lot of poblano in my tacos. Really, that's it. In my tacos, maybe some soups. Uh, if I'm doing some kind of Southwest vibe, it's gonna have a poblano in it, a poblano in it most likely. Um, on that track, jalapenos, also zero point food. Whether you want them pickled or fresh, get you a little spice on and get you some jalapenos. Another one we don't talk about that often, but it's artichoke. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. It was like an air, fro air fried artichoke and then I used a yogurt dip. That's on my list. We'll be making that again soon. It was really good. And again, unique, it gives you variety. We're not bored eating the same thing over and over again. And I just used a can of artichoke. You can also stir it into pasta. That's a great way to have artichoke as well. You can also have heart of palm pasta. That is a zero point pasta. It tastes pretty much just like artichoke. So if you like get some artichoke, get you some heart of palm pasta for zero points. Another thing that you might not be thinking of is roasted red bell pepper. This is zero points. This is a great little thing to have. I like to mix this in the blender with some sour cream and some like Mexican spices and some like taco seasonings and make a really delicious red bell pepper crema that you can stir into pasta or put over a taco, whatever you want. Um, but you got options and it doesn't have to just be in the produce aisle. And on that note, pickles. Some of them do have points. So if you're getting like a sweet pickle that has sugar in it, that's gonna have points. But if you're getting like the regular dill pickle, you need a little crunch and a little, a little vinegar kick. That's a great way to have a little snack in the afternoons. Avoid the chips, you know? Go for the zero point option. Honorable mentions. 
I have an acorn squash recipe that I've already posted. It's not zero points because I add Parmesan and stuff to it, but it is so good and it's worth it. It's worth adding points for. And again, a new unique way of eating something. A lot of, a lot of people probably don't have acorn squash on their weekly grocery list, but it is delicious. Link down below. Another thing is delicata squash. It is harder to find. It's a winter seasonal item and you can make some bomb fries out of it. Air fry it like I already talked about with whatever seasonings you want and it tastes, it doesn't taste like french fries, but it gives you the vibes. You know what I mean? We're going for vibes here. Nothing tastes like a potato other than potato. And those are good too. Those are also worth points, but I digress. On to fruit. So I have recently discovered not an apple. I, I've known what an apple was, obviously. But this is an opal apple. And I love it so much. It is so sweet and so delicious. It is the king of all the apples, in my opinion. So I present you the opal apple. If you find them, just buy one and see, see what you think. I love it by itself. Normally with apples, I need something with it, whether I'm sprinkling cinnamon on it or doing the yogurt fluff or peanut butter powder. I normally need something with it. This guy, he tastes good like that, but he also tastes good by himself. So, opal apple, coming at you. I also love pears this time of year in the winter time when they are in season. It's been my go-to, man, and I've been enjoying it. I love grapes, I love cantaloupe. I like strawberries mo more in the summer when they're in season. Love watermelon in the summertime. Pineapple as well in the summertime. It's a little too tart right now, but it eats the, my mouth. So if you also like pineapple, but it, the acid eats your mouth up, pair it with yogurt and it like coats the pineapple and it keeps that from happening. So yogurt fluff plus pineapple, double goodness and no pain in the mouth. So don't walk past lemon and lime thinking it doesn't count. You can get so much flavor from lemon and lime, whether you're throwing it in your water to get your water in, because we still need to do that. Uh, but you can also zest those suckers. Adding a little zest to your shrimp for your shrimp tacos, yes. Or into your sour cream for a crema, yes. Add a little bit of lemon zest into your overnight oats and you're good to go. Add, add some blueberries. Aren't you hungry now? Isn't this making you hungry? And we're hungry for zero point foods. It's fantastic. I love a banana, but I, I'm weird, I guess, because I like it when like, there's a lot of brown. And I guess I'm, it seems like more people like it more yellow. And I want at least 50% brown on my banana. And if it goes past that, if we go past the 75% brown, then I'm gonna peel it and throw it in my freezer because that will make a bomb protein smoothie, guys. Do not be throwing away your, your dark brown bananas. I don't care if they're 100% brown. Throw it in the freezer. You're welcome. You can also make not only protein smoothies, but nice cream. If you haven't tried that, you add a couple bananas to your blender with some almond milk or cashew milk. You can use regular milk, but it's going to add points because regular milk has more points. Or if I'm using a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk, I'm not going to have any points for that. So blend it together and it's going to be really thick and creamy and you can eat it like it's ice cream. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. Now I'm not a fan of fresh blueberries, but for some reason I love frozen blueberries. So I'm adding them to my pancakes. I'm adding them to uh, my smoothies. That's mainly what I do with them. I make uh, my own homemade jam out of them, but like the, the quick version of jam, not like the old lady canning. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just don't have the time, you know, and I don't know how to do it, so. I also love frozen cherries in my smoothie. So the smoothie I keep talking about, like let's just go ahead and throw it out there. It's three points because of my protein powder and the liquid I use. I use a half cup of light OJ, that's one point. I use a half cup of almond milk, zero points. Half a banana, zero points. Third cup of blueberries, zero points. Third cup of cherries, zero points. Banana, cherry, blueberry, all that's frozen. That's how you're gonna get the delicious texture. Then I add one scoop of vanilla protein. I have one that's a two point protein powder. And then add a handful of spinach in there. It's freaking delicious, so. Sometimes I like mandarins, sometimes I don't. You know, I've gotta be in the mood for it. 
I love an orange twist in my old fashioned, but I don't think that counts, you know? I have to be careful with the uh, really acidic fruits because of my mouth. So that's about all I love. Fruit wise, zero point fruit wise, I think. I'm probably forgetting something, it's fine. Now going into condiments, sauces, all the, the fun things, right? We, all are, we already know protein, vegetables, fruit, those are zero points. But let's talk about all the other stuff that makes those things taste delicious. Uh, I'll, I'll, why am I getting so aggressive with the butter? Um, Air Pop popcorn, zero point food. I bought a container on Amazon. I can link it down below. It was like 10 bucks. Uh, and all I have to do is put my popcorn kernels in it, cook it for like two minutes, 15 seconds ish in the microwave, spray it with some of this butter spray, and then add some sea salt, fine sea salt, and give it a little shake, and a little spray, and a little shake, and a little spray, a little shake, and then you have absolutely delicious zero point popcorn. Also, let's not forget about herbs. You can make so many things taste good with some green onion, chives, dill, uh, rosemary, thyme, like all these things are just bursting with flavor and can make you be happier and less bored on your food journey to healthy. So make sure you're adding those things to your list. If you're cooking a soup, steep it with some rosemary and thyme. It's delicious. Um, I like to top almost everything with some green onion or chive at the end because it just adds a brightness. If you like parsley, that's a great way to top things with. I personally think it tastes like grass. So not for me, but maybe for you. Uh, cilantro. My husband loves cilantro. I think it tastes like soap. We get it for my husband. I can do it in recipes, but I don't like a bunch of cilantro on something, you know, uh, but great ways to add flavor without points. Now those herbs don't just extend to the produce department, but the baking aisle as well. Add all of your delicious seasonings to your food to make it taste good. Do you want Italian? Do you have something sweet? like your yogurt or oatmeal and you want to add cinnamon, zero points, man. Garlic, onion, smoked paprika. Like that's like the Trinity in my book. Um, you can get a little more adventurous and do something like a jerk chicken. I make, I sprinkle this on chicken, put it in some tortillas with a like slaw that I add this to. And it's like a Jamaican jerk chicken taco. So again, more options, more variety, so you're not bored. Do you see a theme here? Don't be bored. You've got, you've got options in front of you. You just have to be willing to reach out and grab them, okay? And buy them because everything's so expensive. On that note, ranch is great. I don't like that it's not focusing. Uh, this is a spicy ranch, a fiesta ranch, regular ranch, it's all good. I'm from Texas though, so I might be biased. Other condiments that make things taste good. Mustard. I don't personally like yellow mustard, but I love me some Dijon mustard. And I even do this thing where I will steam my broccoli, like buy this in the bag, frozen broccoli that you can steam. I cook it for half the time it says to on the bag. Meanwhile, melt a little, I can't believe it's not butter. Add like a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and a bunch of garlic and like cook it all together, let it all break down, then toss your broccoli into that buttery Dijon mustard goodness and then sprinkle with a little Parmesan. Mm. So good. And again, it's just different. It just gives, you can have broccoli three days a week and have it three different styles. You can have it roasted one day, Dijon version the other day, and then steamed with just a cheese sauce, you know? It's so good. Some of this other stuff is stuff that, it's zero points for a reasonable amount. So it can add points if you like just scoop it out. It's not a true zero point food. When I think of a true zero point food, I'm thinking it's something you can have as much of it as you want and it's not gonna cost points. These are not on that list. It's okay, we can still have them and uh, have delicious food and use reasonable amounts. So this is one of those things. This is a good, good jam. I like the raspberry and the strawberry the best. This is zero points for one tablespoon. So if you have the Sara Lee 45 calorie bread, you can do a piece of toast, spray a little, I can't believe it's not butter, and one tablespoon of this, and you have a one point piece of toast to have on the side with your hard boiled eggs or whatever the heck you are having. 
just for a snack. I actually think I'm gonna have that here for a snack in a minute with my corn that I have forgotten about. Having a sugar-free maple syrup falls in this category. I can have three tablespoons for zero points. So often what I do is I take those frozen blueberries, I put about a third of a cup in a microwave safe dish, I microwave them, smash them down into like little juicy bits, pour my three tablespoons of maple syrup and mix that together and then pour that over my Kodiak cakes and I have a delicious blueberry maple syrup. You can also use that. I have used the maple syrup in my turkey sausage recipe that I'm gonna to try to link down below. So you can use it in lots of different ways. You can use it to sweeten up oatmeal. So many options. Other ways we can add zero points and lots of flavor is by adding something like a buffalo sauce. Any will do. The Frank's is really good on points. I like this one to mix in with shredded chicken. Do this in a laughing cow wedge and you've got a delicious um, buffalo shredded chicken. You can top it onto roasted potatoes or baked potato or a bun. Do whatever the heck you want. I also love Ray's no sugar added barbecue sauces. I've tried many different ones and I haven't found one that I haven't liked. So a barbecue sauce, you can use two tablespoons for zero points. This is one tablespoon for zero points. The Franks, uh, you can get a lot more for zero points. On to chicken broth. You can just use actual chicken broth or you can do something like this and make a sauce for your chicken. And this is like a chicken broth concentrate. It makes your stuff taste so good without adding any points. I also like the powder that is like the chicken broth powder. Um, I like to keep both of these things on hand for when I don't have chicken broth in the pantry, but also again, to make a sauce for your chicken, chicken broth is too liquidy. You're not gonna get the like bang for your buck on the flavor, but adding this or the like bouillon powder, you're gonna get a lot of flavor for no points. Doing things like taco sauces. These are just taqueria, just like street tacos. I have a roja and a avocado cilantro. I also have the uh, Taco Bell hot sauce. They're all good. You know what I haven't done in a long time? No, you don't. You're new here. Uh, it's the taco, it's the breakfast tacos. So you can get the extra thin corn tortillas. I believe that there is a brand where you can have two tortillas for one point or two points. Scramble some eggs. You can add a little bit of cheese on it if you want, depending on how much points you want to use, and then drizzle them with the Taco Bell mild, uh, hot sauce. That is a good breakfast taco, my friend. Add a little bit of that turkey sausage. Turn into a burrito. Man, I'm getting hungry. Another honorable mention, I already mentioned it once, but half a cup of almond milk is zero points. So if I'm having like the low sugar hot cocoa, I'll do half a cup of almond milk and just like a splash of water to help give it more um, flavor. Or I'll do the creamy cashew. Both of them are 25 calories and zero points for half a cup. So that's another thing I'd like to do a lot. And another thing I really love, again, I mentioned it, is the I can't believe it's not butter spray. It's a great way to get that butter flavor throughout your food without like really adding like a chunk of butter that's gonna add up points really quickly. All right, that's all. Uh, that's a, that was a lot, so I don't know I'm saying why that's all. But I hope this gives you really good inspiring ideas for low point foods or zero point foods. Um, using these zero point foods to make low point option meals so that you're gonna have success. In my experience, as long as I am staying within my points consistently, I have success on WW. So hopefully these are ways to help you have the same success. I wish you the best. I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all. Oh yeah, I just wanted to give you a friendly reminder that if you don't wash your fruit and have it ready to go, you probably aren't gonna eat it. So maybe, maybe go wash your produce and get it ready. Okay, uh, yeah, I love you so much, bye.